aided by healthy cash flows across regions and monsoon performance the tractor industry had seen a strong surge in wholesale volumes since the relaxation of lockdowns in previous fiscal helping the industry volumes register a growth of 27% to discuss this in broader perspective we have our next panel discussion on revitalizing the momentum for tractor sales in financial year 22 I would like to invite Nabil Khan editor ET Auto to moderate this panel discussion over to Nabil Hello and welcome to this afternoon session on revitalizing the momentum for tractor sales I'm Nabil A Khan we have seen the tractor sales has been going as strong despite the challenges posed by once in a lifetime kind of pandemic that we have seen after corona so that was the history we have to discuss how is it going to pan out at the same time we have seen in the last few months there has been some moderation in the growth rate of tractor sales but still we have a quite good volume so we will try and understand what are the factors that is going to help the tractor sales grow in this fiscal year as well as going forward what the customers are thinking where are the implementation of tractors being done what are the new areas and avenues of growth that tractor industry looks at and how the customer behavior is going to change and how the oems and the tractor ecosystem is going to deal with the upcoming triumph for implementation thank you so much gentlemen for joining et auto farm equipment summit let me introduce to you the expert panel that we have this time mr madan sabnivas he is the chief economist at care rating we also have mr bhartendu kapoor president sales and marketing tafe it's one of the leading uh, tractor manufacturers in india we are also joined by mr ronak varma vice president and country manager for sar at cnh industrial uh, we also have mr ashish goel business head for farm equipment finance at lnl lnt financial services we also have seema gupta owner of rajasthan tractor machinery he, she is one of the leading uh, tractor dealers and also former council member of fada that's federation of automobile dealer association uh thank you so much gentlemen for joining this panel discussion before we start this session get into the actual nitty gritty of uh, how the tractor industry is going to fare well it would be nice to uh, call in mr madan and understand how the rural, rural economy is uh, performing right now and what are the numbers what the numbers are telling what are the forecast when it comes to uh, rural economy and what are the drivers or the challenges that we can see uh mr madan over to you Yeah, thanks a lot, uh, Nabil, and good afternoon to everyone. You know, when we talk of the rural economy, very often I think we tend to associate it with agriculture, and we say that uh, we have a good monsoon, we have a good Kharif crop. It's going to be a good sec. It's going to be a good uh, session for the agricultural sector. Now, I think what it's necessary for one to understand as to what exactly is the rural uh, sector in India. We really don't have any authentic information about uh, how the GDP emanates from the rural sector because the way it's traditionally uh presented is based on eight sectors where agriculture is one and you have other segments like uh, industry and services a large part of which also belongs to the rural sector now we have some information based on 2011 12 uh, which niti aayog has come up with which when extrapolated actually shows that the rural economy accounts for around 45% of overall gdp in the country okay and out of this 45% interestingly we have 15% which comes from agriculture and 30% which comes from manufacturing and services as one can see when we are talking of this 30% coming from manufacturing and services it's essentially the msme segments in both manufacturing and services which account for gdp so when we are looking at overall automobile sector not just uh, tractors Uh, we tend to focus on saying will the rural demand really surface uh, resurface actually every year because i think that's the question which comes up in the months of september october and one should realize that we are actually talking not just of agriculture but also of the non agricultural segment and we all are aware of the fact that the sme segment has been buffeted twice 
by the two lockdowns which were there. And therefore the prospects in terms of demand coming from the rural MSME segment should be a bit moderated. I, I wouldn't really be very pessimistic about it, but I think we have to be watchful about it. Now let's come to the agriculture part. Now, when you look at agriculture, we say 15% of GDP comes from agriculture. If you're actually talking of what part comes from crops, it's around eight to 9% because we have uh, forestry, which comes on uh, forestry and the other kind of lumber, lumbering, which goes on and fisheries, et cetera, which is non-crops is around 6% of GDP. So we're talking of around eight to 9% is actually crops. So whenever we are focusing on the monsoon, we're focusing on Kharif, we're actually looking at this 9% of GDP. And further, given the fact that uh, Kharif uh, accounts for around 50% of our uh, total crops, which is meaning we're talking of 4.5% maximum of GDP is coming from Kharif crop. And the remaining is coming from the Rabi crop. So therefore, I think we should get this particular perspective clear that when we're saying that we're having a good monsoon and probably the agricultural crop will be normal based on what the Ministry of Agriculture has forecast so far, in fact, if you look at the sowing pattern, it appears to be going very much on track. There are slight shortfalls probably in rice, in coarse cereals, bit and oil seeds and cotton. But we do believe that by the end of September, we should be able to reach the normal levels. And overall agriculture should, I mean, based on the Kharif crop should be normal. Now, we're looking at uh, tractors as such. We look at the farmers and look at the patterns. You know, when I, as an economist, when I looked at the data over the last 10, 15 years, what I've seen is that there are certain cycles which are followed. When I say cycles, they're very short amplitudes every year. Maybe every year, if it goes up in one year, it comes down the next year, again goes up, again comes down. Maybe there have been a few aberrations. So, uh, Nabil, when we were talking of saying we had an all time high production sales, which happened last year, I think if any of our econometric numbers uh, models are run, it will definitely say that things will get moderated this year. Because if people spent a lot of money last year, they will not be doing the same amount in the current financial year. It doesn't happen twice. So the so-called pent-up demand or your trend, which happens, which took place last year, will not may not really materialize this year. Now, why do I say this? One is, of course, statistically, there may not be a very strong basis for one to think that there would be an upsurge in terms of demand for tractors this year. But the second thing is that if you look at uh, what happened during the first wave of the pandemic, I think it was more urban centric. Rural India had escaped uh, more or less. And we did not see too many uh, negative news coming from the rural areas. There, was a, there were news, of course, of large amount of migration which took place. People went back to their villages. But we were not, uh, we never got to know that these people were really infected. And I think the way in which the ring fencing was done at all levels, when people migrated from the urban to the rural areas, as well as the way in which they entered their rural homes, I think there was a lot of uh, a lot of effort which went in to make sure that the infection did not spread. But if I look at this year, I think what the second wave, even though it was for a shorter duration, lockdown was less serious. We had less amount of migration taking place. But I think there has been a lot of infiltration into the rural areas. And when I say infiltration into rural areas, it means that people in the rural areas were also affected. A lot of these numbers have not really come out because we didn't have the testing facilities. There's only a case of a person, maybe somewhere in Uttar Pradesh who was infected. You reach the last stage, we are not able to survive. You go to the to, 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 the, to the city for treatment, that's when you get registered to say that you're a COVID patient. We've, I've seen it personally happening in states like Uttarakhand. I've seen it happening in Rajasthan, Delhi, where we have people from outside coming inside and getting themselves registered. So I think the takeaway basically is that rural India, the farming community has been affected this year, not just in terms of people getting affected, but also we have seen that their overall spending on healthcare has increased. So in this kind of a situation where people have been infected, you're spending more on healthcare. The whole question is that will you actually be spending more on tractors this year or not? We had some skepticism saying that on account of this, there would be some problem in terms of getting labor for the sewing. I think that has been dispelled to a large extent. I think that's positive news that the sewing pattern has been fairly uh, normal. And I think we do expect it to be okay by the end of September. But now the whole question, the broader issue is that in a situation where even people like you and I staying in urban areas, we have been spending more on preventive healthcare, even if we have not been affected. Are we actually confident of going ahead for a capital good? Okay, so if you, uh, as, a, as a rating agency, we're also in touch with some of the financiers. We're talking to banks, we're talking to NBFCs. I think everybody seems to be fairly gung-ho about it. So contrary to the kind of view which I'm putting forward as an economist, I think from the business perspective, it does look like that the financiers do seem to be a bit positive 
Or maybe that's the way in which business moves, that you have to be positive until the reality sets in. But as an economist, I would just put a red flag saying that the same kind of enthusiasm which we saw last year may not be replicated this year, notwithstanding the fact that agriculture is going to grow at 35 to 4% this year. Kharif is going to be good. We've had a good monsoon. The reservoir levels are rising, which means Rabi should not be a problem. But the willingness to spend and the ability to spend, I think these are the two issues which would be coming in the way. So will farmers actually defer the decision to buy a tractor today? Will you go in for a second-hand tractor? Third, even in case finance is available, I think today the interest rates are at crazy low rates. I think they're actually tempting for anybody to go ahead and borrow. You know very well that your, your interest rates are not going to increase at least for the next one year. It does look like that the conditions are set for making sure that the tractor business as well. But based on the statistical fact that things are not going to be good and the reality that people have been spending more on healthcare, I think there could be two small red flags which I would put, try to put forward as we go ahead into this discussion. Thank you. Yeah, Madan, you have really uh, given all the information on how things are going to pan out. And it comes out that it is not going to be as good as it was last year, uh, obviously because of the high base. And the factors that you mentioned, like the uh, you know, expenditure in healthcare side has increased in terms of you know, people might buy used car and all the funds could be a constraint for the rural market. That's another area. Uh, Bhartendu, I would like to bring you in here. Uh, the topic talks about revitalizing. You heard Madan saying the challenges that we have, the reasons he has given very strongly that how the market may not fare that way this year. Do, do you think the local market can cross a million unit mark this year? in 2022 and what are you going to do to revitalize the market sentiment? Yeah, thanks Nabil. Um, well, uh, I think uh, to some extent what uh, my co-panelist Madan has mentioned is correct, uh, but there is another side of the data that you need to look at. See the total food grain production we all know uh, has been at the highest this year. However, if we look at on the demand side for the next I won't say this year alone, but if you look at 20 years down the line, right? And then you look at the population growth that is happening. Currently it's 138 billion, right? And if I have to do a forecast for 2040, current food grain production, and uh, my co-panelist will agree with me, is around uh, 305 lakh million tons, right? Uh, and if we have to look at the year 2040, we will need close to about 335 million tons of fruit grain. Arable land, which is available today, which is about 159 million hectares, is constant. It is not increasing, right? So what needs to be done? The only thing that can make sure that we remain self-dependent and we have enough food grains for the years to survive at least till 2040, and I'm not going beyond that, the, production, the productivity needs to increase. And what does that mean? The level of farm mechanization, which is there in the country, has to go up. So obviously, something needs to be done by the OEMs, by the uh, implement manufacturers. But there is a lot which also needs to be done by the government. right? So let me, let me first uh, take this question into two parts. One is from long-term perspective, and then is from short-term perspective. Right? If I look at long-term perspective, the Overall, cultivable land available is close to about 133, 183, 184 million hectares, whereas arable land is only 159 million hectares, right? So how do we make sure that this cultivable land is fully utilized and it becomes a arable land, right? So that means uh, you convert the agri land to the arable land, which is another about 27, 28 million hectares where government needs to play a role, right? By making sure that right kind of inputs are available and this land increases. Second is the kind of productivity which has to go up. It cannot go up with the kind of equipments and the implements and the tractors we have today. They're good for today, but you need then modernization. You need new features. You need more productivity. You need fuel, fuel efficiency. Now, every single manufacturer in the industry is trying for that. Everybody is coming out for new, new variants, new uh, technology. 
However, our, we are limited by the testing facility in the country. Currently, there is only one testing center, which is in Budni, and every manufacturer is dependent on that. Every manufacturer might be having maybe 20 more new products in the pipeline, but the wait list is three years and four years. And then once the tractor is accepted, it takes about one year time to take a report out, right? So we are already behind. So I think that's an area where government needs to play a role, enhance the testing capacity, wherein the new variants, new models, which are coming up quickly, they are tested out, they are up available to the farmers. Let us second point. Third point is within the given arable land, how do we make sure that more productivity is there? And that calls for uh, precision agriculture, use of IT, uh, uh, new age tractors I already talked about, right? So they, that's a role where uh, IT has to play and that is getting integrated. We are already seeing the signs. There are a lot of startups. There are OEMs who are playing a role in that. And uh, we are yet to see the results. But there are some, uh, uh, but I would say it needs a lot of scale up and that is where the government help will be required. The Second third part, question. the third part is the focus on uh, affordability. The current, the farmer cannot afford what the technology can provide. So there is a limitation there. So the focus on custom hiring centers, FPOs, which has started, but I think a scale up is required there also. And there are models which have been uh, shared by uh, Tractor Manufacturers Association. Uh, there is a lot of study which has been done and what can be done to scale that up. I think those are the areas. And then the last area is there is a subsidy available, no doubt about it in some of the states, but a lot of reform is required. There are some very good states like uh, Urissa, Maharashtra, Gujarat, where a lot of good practices are there and it is going very, very smooth. But then there are also uh, some laggard states where uh, uh, there is a process of subsidy, but it's not, uh, I would say, uh, uh, conducive to the farmer needs. And it's more political rather than uh, you know getting actually to the farmers. I think those are the areas where if we focus upon the long term, we can see this demand of tractors continue to scale up because the kind of mechanization which is required uh, will need uh, more and more tractors. And our population, which currently is about 45 million, has to go up to about 80 million uh, if we need the food grain production. Coming to short term, I would agree with uh, uh, Mr. Madan uh, that yes, uh, there is a decline which is visible in the last three months of time, but I would, I would take it with a word of caution. To my mind, this decline is uh, obviously any, any growth which happened like uh, that happened uh, last year, it was on a decline of year before last. So you need to see in the context, but if you see a CAGR, it is still about 10 to 12%. So one year in isolation doesn't give a right picture. But if I have to take this year in isolation now, what is going to happen in this year? See, this decline is visible because the, though the rainfall started on time, however, there has been a lull for almost about five to six weeks of time uh, when Gujarat, Rajasthan, large part of Western UP has been starving for monsoon. And that possibly has uh, uh, has uh, you know impacted these parts of the country, the sowing process and the re-sowing now is going on. And we, as we see the forecast, we believe that the monsoon in the month of September is going to be good. It may not be optimal. It will be suboptimal, but that will still save at least the second crop which the farmer is going to sow. So I am still optimistic. The way we had forecasted in the beginning of the financial year that the uh, tractor market will grow at the rate of about 5 to 6%. I still believe that this year, again, 5 to 6% growth over the last year, which means about 9.5 lakh kind of an industry. That is what is visible to us at this point in time. Thank you, uh, Bartendu. Uh, before I go to Ronak, uh, I think, Madan, you want to add quickly something? Yeah. Just, yeah, actually, just a question for the other panelists, because you all are actually experts dealing in tractors. You know, for automobiles, we've always seen when the price of fuel goes up, there is a decline in demand. How does it work for tractors? Because diesel has reached such an obscene price, and it's very unlikely the government is going to cut back on their excise or the VAT. So I would like to hear your views when you're not talking. Yeah, thanks. 
Uh, yes. Sure. So, uh, uh, Nabil, if you permit me, we've done this uh, calculation, Mr. Madan. Uh, see, uh, every in, uh, obviously, after the farmers have purchased a tractor, which is the single biggest investment a farmer makes, after that, the next best, uh, the next, I would say, quantum investment that farmer has to make is the diesel. Right. Uh, uh, among us, any other thing, the maintenance and, uh, you know, whatever he has to uh, seeds and all that he has to make the, uh, the next biggest investment after the purchase of tractor is actually diesel. Now, with every five rupees increase in diesel per hectare, the increase in the cost is close to about 2000 rupees, around 2100 rupees for a production of either paddy or wheat. So to that an extent, the farmer's productivity goes down, uh, the, uh, the profitability goes down. However, you need to see this in perspective. Don't see it in, in isolation because we've also seen the reports which are uh, obviously being published by Crystal, and uh, we see the uh, farmer income going up because of the MSP, which is eight to 10% growth year on year, which we have witnessed in the last three years of time. So it nullifies that increase in the diesel prices, which have happened. And so uh, despite increase in the diesel prices, I would say that the profitability per hectare this year is still up by about six to six and a half thousand rupees, despite increase in the prices of the diesel. I uh, hope it answers your question, but I understand there's a lot of angle to it. We'll discuss that later. What I understand from your, uh, you know, response, uh, Ronak, how can we vitalize, revitalize the tractor industry is by way of uh, reducing the testing time so that we can introduce tractors with the new features, new implements. You also talked about uh, we should try to increase the, uh, you know, utility of the cultivable land that we have we need to optimize the utilization of that. This is the another point. Then also we need to focus on affordability of uh, tractors. So let's talk about affordability and all this part. We see the diesel price going high. I think one of the highest increase that we have been, uh, seen diesel that certainly increases the operating cost of the farmer. Then we talk about the tram four that is going to come that further increases uh, the cost. So going forward, Ronak, what's your thought? Do you think how much strength does the, uh, you know, Madan, the, Madan's red flag has? Do you expect the industry to uh, limit itself to 9.5 lakh units, which is uh, only 5%, 6% marginal growth? Especially, uh, you see how uh, Mr. Bhatendu also mentioned about the last year's growth was on a smaller base or on a de decline overall CIDR still remains in 10 to 12 percent range so is there some uh, ray of hope for a better double digit growth this year or going forward how do you see the tractor industry and how are you preparing yourself yes um, well good afternoon everyone um, when you call ray of hope, I believe, uh, yes, we definitely do. Okay. And if you look at um, the trajectory of the tractor industry over the last uh, uh, several years, it has, you know, uh, it has grown tremendously. You know, you were close to the roughly around 300,000 tractors. You're closing to about, if I look at this year, over a million tractors, if I include exports, right? So, which is an area that we play in a lot. So, three, nine, over 900,000, we're anywhere between 900, 950,000 is what we call the domestic market, same as what Bhatendraji was saying. But on top, there is going to be the export production that uh, uh, we believe is going to contribute. And why is that important is because it essentially expands uh, uh, in terms of economies of scale, right? So uh, if I look at, uh, you know, you got a lot of data from uh, Mr. Madan and Bhatendu gave us um, several uh, let's say local factors. And if you look at a little bit more of the fundamental data that we have, you got to focus on, and you'll start to understand why it is, right? So if you look at why the tractor industry is, is growing at 10 to 12% uh, CAGR and, and is expected to continue to grow is because uh, we are very inefficient in terms of uh, agriculture, right? 
India has the highest arable land in the world, okay? Uh, and you have about 40% of mechanization rate in the country. If you look at uh, other emerging countries like Brazil is north of 75%, China is closer to 60% and improving. I mean, we have a long way to go. And in India, when you say mechanization, it's really tractorization, right? So the tractor is the source of power within the farm, right? It's used for electricity, it's used as pumps, it's used for uh, transportation, uh, cultivation and, and everything. So the source of power on the farm is essentially the tractor. Now, uh, it, the growth of the tractor industry is influenced by a couple of things. One is farm income, like we heard a lot, which is driven by crop prices, the cost of input uh, financing, et cetera, cost of finance. But the other is the amount of labor, labor availability in the farm right? Because the, the crops have to be harvested. And what we saw last year in the pandemic, when, you know, even though rural India was not as impacted, but Mr. Madan said, the shortage of labor happened because there's a huge migration that occurred, right? And the areas where you had shortage of labor grew almost 100% in terms of year over year tractor sales, whereas, you know, East, which is the supply of labor, so the states of UP, Bihar, and so on, had almost no growth or was very moderate growth in terms of actual uh, uh, tractor sales. So in, in this relates, if you look at the long-term trends, in 1990, 60% of the total workforce was in farms. Uh, today, it's closing to closer to like 40%. And by 2030, it's supposed to go down to close to about 25% of the total labor force. So what, what, what options do we have? We've got to increase productivity, right? And we've got to do that at an affordable rate. Uh, uh, if I look at farm uh, per capita income of India, it's closer to $2,000 per capita income, but rural per capita is like $550, right? So it's not equitable. And so you've got to really provide cheap and, and, and viable solutions for the rural, for, for the rural customers to be able to make money, right? And that's what all OEMs are essentially trying to do. And the OEMs can do so much. There is also the government that has to participate within this, within this sector to facilitate this. And they're doing a lot of, I mean, there are a lot of programs and there are a lot of announcement of incentives and so on. Uh, I, but I, I, I'm, you know, you sort of tend to get clubbed for with the auto, but then if you look at farm specific, it's, it's a bit ad hoc. And I think if we, if we streamline some of those programs that enable, um, let's say, the, the growth of tractors, it's going to help rural India. It'll help the OEMs actually provide higher technological support and, and solutions to our farmers, which is imperative for crop uh, production to go up to meet the demands of the future, right? So in the immediate need, okay, by 2022, I think that it'll be moderate to flat growth, okay? So we will sustain it for 2022, but again, you it's very cyclical. And so what happens is the cost of production goes up and therefore the profitability farm income starts to get impacted and so on. But I, I think we have to look at it long-term because OEMs like us and, and like TAFE and so on, don't, don't uh, do investments based on you know one year projection right we do it on on a long term and sustainable basis and you know we at cnh industrial are looking to double our manufacturing capability the installed capacity of tractors in the in the country today is 1.5 million tractors so clearly there's a promise there and and then it's 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 growing even further and probably will be closer to 2 million tractors okay so yes you will have trem 4 coming that's going to be a cost impact to the customer uh, and we've got to figure out ways to level that. And one of the ways to do that, which you call this ray of hope, I think is there is because TREM4 is actually converging technology, global technologies, and that opens a huge market of export to, to the Indian OEMs uh, that we never had before, right? And so we can bring scale to the country and that can make equipment a lot more affordable to our customers as we go on uh, in rural India. And I think uh, that should allow for a sustainable growth over the next decade or so. Thank you, Ronak. Uh, you rightly pointed out that a lot of scope and opportunity lies in Indian agriculture space because mechanization or tractorization is still at a low uh, pace. 
Uh, let's go to Seema Gupta and understand how the customers are reacting right now. The tractor buyers, what are uh, their moods? What are their inclination? What do they want in a tractor so that we get the uh, are we there in terms of product? Are we there in terms of de uh, dealing with the customers? Are we able to meet their expectations? Seema, over to you. Uh, can you please explain the market sentiment from the customer point of view? What are they looking for in a tractor? Thank you so much, Naveen. And thanks to ET Auto for having me over here. Uh, to start with, I would uh, say that, uh, yes, agriculture space has witnessed a lot of actions in the past one and a half years and perhaps seen the biggest silver lining in the agriculture during pandemic. Uh, there has been an unprecedented growth of around 27% last year in the financial year 21-22 and uh, with a higher volume base of around 9 lakh tractors, which was an historic moment and I think it is the heavy, ever highest figure in the tractor industry uh, after independence. So, uh, but as, um, uh, as it comes to my mind, uh, like uh, when you talk about rural India, you, when you talk about um, uh, rural sector, the immediate picture which comes into mind is we are associate, we associated with agriculture. Uh, so agriculture, uh, is primarily associated with um, rural India. Now, since rural India is such a big portion of the total country, the OEMs, the manufacturers, the um, uh, government, everybody has to think about it because uh, we, we, uh, we as a human being should think about it that when we earn from somebody, we should repay back to them also. It is our duty that we repay back to them. Like uh, rural India, when we talk about, uh, it is divided into two categories, like tractor is being majorly used for agriculture. And secondly, as for mining, haulage and commercial activities. But uh, we all know that tractor by itself cannot perform and unless an implement is attached to it. But uh, as, uh, I see that since last 25 or 30 years, as a dealer, I have not seen any significant change in the uh, technology and in the farming practices, in the farming techniques, in the designs of the trolley, uh, the, uh, the threshers, the cultivators, which are commonly used by the small and the marginal farmers. So uh, uh, you will see that these days around 30 to 40 percent of the tractors are used in commercial sector. So uh, many road accidents are occurring uh, because of improper designs of these tractor trolleys and without any brakes, without any lights, without any indicators, without any reflectors. So I think that the OEMs and the manufacturers, they need to focus on this side and they should come out and bring about these changes and be a part of the change. And like in so far as agriculture is concerned, you will still see that after independence also we are uh, dealing with those traditional methods of cultivation like uh, those traditional cultivators are being used harrow is being used there is no modernization there is no change in the technology so that needs to be brought about by and this is the duty of the I feel it is the duty of the government and the manufacturers they should go hand in hand and do something for the agriculture sector so that it revitalizes, it revives, and there is an assured income, source of income for them so that some planning can be done. Because there the source of income is not um, regular, 
sometimes they earn a lot sometimes they do not earn they are hand to mouth so planning goes ay and uh, things do not uh, come out as we foresee them last year like uh, i see that last year the growth was terrific and uh, mainly it was due to that rural sector was not impacted so much by the covid as it is this year and uh, also the government was also kind enough to declare agriculture as an essential commodity so uh, the growth uh, uh, like agriculture overall agricultural activities uh, care were carried out uninterruptedly so imagine you have raised very valid point that i think uh, already oems are also looking at in terms of nice factor pointed out the basics how the hazard and all safety uh protocol can be maintained in the products uh, that i am sure this uh, factor manufacturers are also uh, uh working on that and many are already there on the streets maybe uh if you might be also uh, a bit of yeah, these uh, are, uh, no, these are actually basic initiatives small small initiatives uh, these require so much of investment just want to understand you also talked about the sustenance of the Uh, uh, farmers that everybody is talking about now that India is looking at farmers as one of the most important community that needs to be helped. I just want to understand an average tractor buyer who comes to your dealership. What are the challenges they are talking about? What are the core area of concern when they come to acquire a tractor? If you could briefly give us a sense. So uh, I think Nabil, uh, when a uh, customer approaches our dealership. first of all uh, like the uh, the price of the tractor the price of the tractor is a very sensitive uh, thing it's not only tractor any any product you take price is the basic uh, thing which drives the uh, sale so uh, this year uh, there has been an exorbitant increase in the price of the tractors uh, uh, this has been assigned uh, to the increase in the input costs by the oems but the increase is extremely on the extreme side like four times the uh, four times it has been increased but we see that uh, the farm income has not doubled or tripled or four times so uh, a customer is unable to buy uh, there is a demand in the market uh, but looking at the price increase he has restricted his uh purchase his buying capacity is not there also the second uh, thing is like uh, the retail finance which is available which is a driving factor finance is the blood of the economy so unless finance is available it is not possible to drive the sales so finance which is available right now is the same amount the tractor costs have increased by around 40 to 45000 but the finance facilities have not increased to the same extent still the a tractor which is costing 7 lakh rupees the finance available is 5 lakh rupees or 4 4.95 lakh rupees so margin money he has to pay more margin money but he has that same amount of limited margin margin money so he is unable to buy the tractor and then he switches on to the used tractor or he defers his a uh, decision to buy the tractor and uh thirdly like uh, because uh, a tractor is required for mechanization the due to this second wave of covid there were partial lockdowns and the uh, mining activities the other activities the haulage activities the commercial activities had comes to come to stand still Uh, there were a lot of uh, obstructions they were not able to do out, uh, carry out all those activities so that also was one of the reasons why the uh, tractor sales have been impacted and as rightly pointed out by one of our co panelist that more of the uh, like farm uh, this rural sec in rural sector the farmers income is limited so he has to prioritize his um, uh, uh, his decisions so this year the rural sector was also impacted a lot by covid so they uh, they had to spend more on healthcare so 
that was the first priority and then the second priority was buying the tractor thank you so much thank you so much this is time function i'll have to now talk this to uh, ashish goel ji uh, uh, now it's your turn to see the ball is rolling to your court uh, uh seema ji pointed out that the right full you know of finance is uh, a bit uh, missing link uh, in order to push the market up uh, uh she talked about that the cost which has started to go up uh, when in the automobile segment uh similar kind of hike uh of thin the cost going up for all automobiles and tractors alike so she said that uh, there have been two instances of uh, price hike that have been uh, introduced by the tractor manufacturer that had been seen but uh, the the limit or the uh, limit of funds and how are you trying to get these uh, farmers or the factors buyer and has financing been remains a big uh, a challenge in this space sure thanks will uh, a lot has been covered uh, you know by bk and by ronak on uh, what is being done as far as uh, the industry is concerned the fact that there is a gap and to madan's point uh, uh one things for sure uh, at the levels that we currently are is there a gap available if it is not then obviously looking at it from a different point of view but given that 40 to 45% is the mechanization or the tractorization at the current space there is a gap available now uh with the gap being available the other thing that uh, kind of factors into it is that 45 to 50% of the customers that we onboard are new to credit which means they have not taken credit before and that is the space wherein the growth is coming from yes there are people who go about exchanging their tractors there are people who go about taking a better tractor or more of it uh, given that they might lease land or do other things but the fact is that 45 to 50% are still customers who have not taken a tractor before so the question always comes in is that if as a financier i want to see the sector grow what is it that i need to do okay this is from a customer's point of view and what does he look at he looks at profitability productivity uh, uh, productivity and uh, security i mean these are the three things that he would primarily look at enough has been said about profitability and productivity and that the oems are doing enough and more let me take an example of security and because uh, the pandemic Uh, is something that's been talked about and the impact of the pandemic that side of the customers now typically uh, the rural customer is under insured is a given uh, yes uh, if the breadwinner or the customer falls sick uh, whatever money is saved or the money that he has towards repayment of the emi goes towards hospitalization or cure and rightfully so now what we did was when we realized that that we realized it's not that the customer doesn't want to pay but it's a it's a situation that he's being forced to uh, we along with our insurance partners came up with the product which said that if you are hospitalized for any reason and i say any reason for four days or more all you had to give us was the discharge slip and we would take care of your emi and that emi constitutes to 40 to 50% of his annual payment and you would be surprised to know that 50% of all the customers that we onboarded now take the scheme on so the question is if we as financiers start looking at them for the needs that they have and start to service for them there is enough and more that they are willing to adapt to i mean they have the aspirations there is absolutely no doubt about that they have the understanding of what is good for them and they have the acceptability and the flexibility to change if they see the good the fact is if you look at smartphone penetration in the rural sector it used to be at about 9% in 2015 you know by 2018 it had gone to 25% and we're talking about in the next couple of years going to about 75 to 80% so all they need to see and the product proposition that comes in from our end should be towards that and that's what we're striving to do the second point that uh, seema ji raised about uh, you know the financing remaining flat i'm sure bk would make my life miserable if that was the case uh, and uh, that's not uh, what we look at and 
funnily, the rural market, uh, the average LTV still hovers around 70 to 75%. So the fact is that he thinks it through and only then does he go about buying a tractor. He is not somebody who says, give me, I have only so much amount of money, but somebody is willing to fund me the rest of the amount and hence I will go and buy the tractor. Uh, I haven't for the past number of years seen that figure increase. Uh, but we do take into account whatever uh, increase in prices come about and uh, the LTVs get adjusted accordingly and at percentage of level, it remains the same. And hence, uh, yeah, the participation for the customer increases a bit, but the majority chunk of it gets borne by the financier. What is the trend in terms of what kind of increase do you see in terms of tractor buys, buys opting for finance? How is it faring in the last few years? If you could share? So last year, uh, it had gone down, wherein the penetration was about 75%, and that was because uh, uh, the cash was rich with the rural customers. The expenditures were down. Uh, money was flowing in. The MSPs were good. The produce was good. So it had gone down to 75%. It's now come back to the 80 to 85 percent range. Uh, the organized sector contributes to about 80 to 85 uh, percent of every tractor that is um, sold in India. What is the rate of rejection for these uh, loans that the people ask for? Uh, it would be sub five percent. Uh, it's primarily, like I said, 45 to 50 percent are new to credit, so hence do not have a credit history. It's only those who have a credit history, uh, which has not been, uh, you know, so good in the past, are the ones that tend to get rejected. Uh, or else uh, the rejection rate is not very high. So what is the rate of NPAs that you have right now? I don't think so. We at LNT would be uh, the right benchmark because we sit at about uh, maybe 20 to 25% of what the industry average would be. Uh, but uh, generally, the industry is between the range of uh, you know eight to ten percent, uh, and that's where it is. Uh, we at LND pride ourselves at uh, having a book which is really really good. Uh, the reason being that uh, we do take care of our customers. It's not just uh, from a point of view of me sourcing him, but even when I'm collecting from him or I'm uh, servicing him, we do ensure that. Uh, all the support that we can provide to him, we are providing to him and uh, are in constant touch with him, taking care of his needs. So uh, we tend to have the best book which is available in the industry. How are you trying to uh, bring out an inclusion of those who do not have a credit history? Uh, is the, this a fine criteria to reject a person who did not take credit on the basis of this? So you don't see any other aspect? So the uh, question is, we do not reject people just primarily because they do not have a credit history. Like I said, 40 to, 45 to 50 percent of uh, the customers that we uh, lend to are people who don't have a credit history. Uh, and we are comfortable and absolutely fine with doing that. The question is, uh, how do I go to other people and how can I do that? I think the way to go forward is going to be analytics and digitization. You know, a capturing of big data driven sanctions. Uh, you know, the culture of alternate data sources, uh, which then allow us to make decisions. One of the things that uh, we are trying to do, and I guess the finance industry will have to do, is get rid of a kind of a bias that we have of an urban customer versus a rural customer. Uh, for an urban customer, we are very uh, willing to look at what he wants. But for a rural customer, we think we know best for what we should give to him. And I think if we get rid of this bias and uh, we focus on what's good for him and uh, look at it from his viewpoint, the product propositions that we will be able to come up with, the mitigants that we will be able to find, uh, the alternate uh, data that we will be able to collect, uh, will bridge this gap. Uh, Currently, uh, you know, tractors is one part of it. And as Madan also mentioned, that's a certain part of the agricultural economy. Uh, for the rest, he still borrows from the unorganized sector. Okay. And, uh, you know, today, this data points, when available, 
will allow financiers uh, like us to get into that space, be able to help him with his working capital or input requirements, uh, provide him with information which then will be good for him from his productivity and profitability point of view, thereby ensuring you know, uh, an overall increase uh, in what we are looking at to do as an industry. Thank you, Ashish. You have rightly pointed out the bias between the rural customer and uh, urban customer has to go. And uh, there has to be a level playing field for either side of the economy. Uh, Madan, I'll come back to you again. We are running out of time, but I request everybody to be now precise and a bit short in their answer because we have only one hour. Uh, Madan, uh, you just heard uh, uh, BK talking about, Bhartendi talking about the MSP increase, uh, the earning per hectare going up by 6,000 to 6,500 rupees. And he uh, gave a lot of counter data. How do you see this, uh, you know, despite all this, even BK remains conservative. He talks about just a 50,000 increase. That means about uh, five, six percent increase over incremental numbers this year. Uh, apart from agriculture, what are the areas that you think in the rural economy that could trigger growth, that could uh, probably provide more leeways, no, more opportunity for the rural market? I think the one, one issue is, of course, on the MSP. I think what was referred to as MSP for rice and wheat, where we have a back-end procurement system. But we have seen that for most of the commodities, especially we saw last year was something like soya bean where the prices were going below the MSP. So MSP is only kind of a signal which the government provides, but we don't really have uh, purchase taking place. So it doesn't really become a credible instrument. So to the extent that there is a back-end purchase taking place, I think uh, the farmers do are, are show that their cost is, is being covered, but not it doesn't happen all the time. And the second point, see, I, I do agree that, you know, when there's a difference between a company and a farmer. See, when a company is making a projection, you have to obviously take a long-term view. So you have to look at five years, 10 years, you know, all these perspectives have to be taken with that's how you do your investment. Unfortunately, when it happens to an individual, I take a decision based on my current income. It's not a case of saying that, okay, in the next five years, I'm sure even the farmer is going to be better off, the income is going to increase, but a current decision is taken on the current income. That is my, my sense, which I get for it. Whereas a corporate normally does it saying that I cannot work on the basis of current. I have to look at five years or 10 years. I think that's where there's a kind of a discord between what BK said and I said, but otherwise I would broadly agree with him. Yes, the, the prospects are very good for the tractor industry. Production has to increase. If it has to happen, there has to be tractorization and it's going to be good. The only thing is, when is it going to happen? When are the two things going to meet? You just heard that, uh, you know, uh, Sima Ji mentioned about a price hike of up to 5-6%, 40 to 45,000 per unit, which is huge, uh, you know, price hike. And we are in for a tram for also going forward. Uh, two things coming together. How do you see uh, this impacting the demand? I'd like to get answer from all of you, starting with Madan quickly, then uh, BK and Rona can add. I think price sensitivity, I think what uh, Seema said is right. People are often sensitive to price. And even though there may be the case of saying that you're, you're financing 70, 75%, the balance margin has to come from me. If I have to wear with them, then I will go ahead and buy it. Otherwise, there will be a detriment of purchase. Yeah, so Nabil, I'll just add. Uh, in last uh, 35, 36 years of time, I have not seen this kind of inflation hitting the industry. Uh, and in fact, price increases not 4 to 5%. Actually, in last uh, five months of time, six months of time, the prices have gone up by about 13 to 14% on tractors, right? Because uh, it's basically a cast iron, right? So if you look at the prices of steel today, especially the uh, uh, pigment ore, and uh, look at the prices of aluminum and copper, uh, it's actually skyrocketed. Uh, it's an increase of uh, almost about 111%, right? So that has impacted the uh, tractor industry the most as far as prices are concerned. And she is absolutely right that prices have actually gone up by about 50,000 in last six months of time. Having said so, I think uh, all our finance partners have come to rescue. As she mentioned about it, the financing actually has gone up. And out of this uh, 50,000 rupees, which has gone up, farmer needs to bring in only 10,000 rupees. 
and 40,000 rupees being covered by uh, all the finance partners. And that's not only for one year, right? The comparison which Simaji made uh, is a little bit wrong. That price increase, yes, it has happened uh, for 50,000 rupees. The, it is spreaded over a period of four years or five years. The loan is spreaded over a period of five years. Now, to that an extent, if I look at the impact which comes on EMI, is close to about 700 or 800 rupees per, per EMI for a farmer, right? So th that's how you need to look at it. And second is farmer income to that an extent has not gone up. I absolutely agree with her, but you need to see in perspective of three to four years of time, not one year's perspective. Ronak, you may want to add uh, to this. Yeah, no, I think okay, you've, you've, you've out, outlined a lot of this. Look, at the end of the day, you know, all the OEMs, including Simaji and everyone, this is a profit-making business, right? So I can relate to, so if you fast forward, we also have a construction equipment business where the trend for has already happened, right? And it's much higher in terms of content of steel. So the, the price increase there has been 10% for the emission and then 15% for, for the cost of material. So it's almost like 25%, wherein the rental rates, et cetera, have not increased, but it's going to happen. It has to happen. So this is what we are we are looking at, and 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 thankfully, the government deferred this this stream for impact right now because that would have exaggerated further this cost. And I think hopefully, look, it's an aberration. Today, the price of HRC in in the U.S. is two x of India and China, right? So everyone is trying to look at the opportunity to export there, and therefore the demand is so high. There is a global, uh, let's say uplift of demand for agriculture equipment and this this is a reality and it's but it's an anomaly right now and it will temper down and we believe that eventually that will happen but then the trend for impact will 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 actually happen now sorry BK, you want carry to on, carry on carry on please sorry. now all i'm saying is uh, you know what does this do as 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 madan rightly stated as an individual you're looking at what is my income going to be next year what is the cost going to be next year how do i manage that and where we have to do, or where I, I think us along with the government has to work on is to remove this unpredictability of income, right? And how do you do that? I mean, various, we have examples of different, I used to, I work in Brazil where the government actually subsidized interest rates, right? So, so you had a government, if, if you had a certain level of content made in Brazil, you actually, the government subsidized the interest rate uh, and, and therefore, you know, it, they made it much more affordable. So you, you hit two birds with one stone. One was you drove manufacturing investments in the country. So people were, were actually producing there. And then they, the, the, the farmer was able to actually take e equipment at much lower interest rates where the market rate was like 25%. He got it at 8%, right? So that's where they spend the subsidy on. They could spend subsidy on, on, on subsidizing the cost of the equipment. It's much more structured, if you will, than simple handouts. But MSP is one way, yes, but you have to actually incentivize the ability that, that enables OEMs like us and, and, and TAFE and so on, that can actually provide sustainable solutions at affordable rates. And I think, you know, one is, for example, the, the PLI. Now, 57,000 crores has been given to the auto sector, but the tractor industry is excluded. Right. If you if the government extended this, obviously the costs for the, the end customer can actually come down. It's not that you know every it's a competitive market, and and you know we actually haven't even raised enough prices that, at the cost that we are seeing today. We have not been able to. So, but if 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 structurally we could take those elements of unpredictability out, I think it builds for the farmer and the ecosystem in a lot better way for us to actually. Uh, uh, you know, understand what the income is going to be and what is the requirement of the farmer so that he can have a viable farming income. Uh, Ronak, before uh, I move, uh, I, I mean, just one point. To... Yeah, yeah. One point I wanted to make, uh, just so that we are clear, you know, the STEM 4A you talked about, but let me just share, this is going to uh, impact only a very small part of the industry, which is 50 horsepower and plus, which is about seven, eight percent of the total industry, not the entire industry, right? So it's a very small part. And my understanding is that uh, the way we are positioned, uh, I think when it gets implemented, it, eventually it is going to uh, impact about in totality about four to four and a half percent of the total industry, not more than that. Yeah. 
you are right bk it's going to be it's you know but but what happens is that industry will half and you you're right it will affect only 4% but what is it doing it's reducing your productivity so what happens is to avoid the cost people take lower cost it doesn't matter if you sell 900 tractors you've got to increase the power you got to increase the technology you got to increase the productivity right even if you sold 700 tractors 100000 tractors but the, the you know the horsepower and your capability and efficiency went up i think the farmers would actually benefit Thank but you. this works in the other way right and this is the problem yeah. So Ronak and BK, you agree that with the tram for coming up, uh, there will be a change in the uh, segment, like the customer will look forward to buying a smaller tractors. That's what you are saying. Yeah, that's what we believe. That's what we believe that about three to four percent of the total industry will switch over to 40 to 50 HP segment and higher HP because this tram for a impact on a customer is going to be almost about a lakh and a half approximately yeah. so and farmer will not see that kind of an improvement in the value he will get right uh, with respect to the money that he has to pay yeah. so therefore he would prefer to go maybe 49 horsepower tractor thank you, know, you so much like so i'll have one uh, uh, you know concluding remark from all of you in 10 seconds starting with madan how do you see what are the three steps that could help revitalize the tractor industry quickly I think it's all based on uh, uh, demand conditions. So demand is going to emanate when the farmers are better off. So I won't say there are three things. Uh, I think it's just a case of your purchasing power has to be high, uh, high. And more important, I think the confidence of the future should be something. You should be confident about the future. Today, when you're talking of third wave, future in infections could be affecting my income. I could become a bit more parsimonious when it comes to spending. So I think it's more a case of certainty about the future, which nobody can guarantee today. So I think it has, it has to be more of a wait and watch uh, situation. Ashish. Uh, so as a financer, I feel uh, providing a seamless uh, process uh, with the excellent tax, taking into account what his needs are, being flexible towards that, quickly coming up with product propositions that cater to that, uh, which give him the trust and the security to be able to take that tractor that he wants to purchase. And if we are able to deliver that quickly, I think uh, that's going to galvanize him. Simaji, your thought? So. Uh, I would say, Naveen, that a uh, lot can be done in this agriculture sector. And uh, the primary things that basically required are uh, increasing the per acre yield of the customer, the farmer. And the government can take initiatives to uh, solve the water problems by linking river and these projects can come up. And also, Divide, uh, they can tie up with the uh, startups, these agri-tech startups to bring in digitalization and technology into the agriculture sector, thereby making uh, uh, the equipments more affordable and more uh, efficient. They, they can improve their farm income and they can save their money and they can have an assured regular source of income. Uh, some crop insurance uh, solutions, crop solutions should be provided. Some Something like that uh, should be done. I think that uh, Indian manufacturers are not so big. So, and individually, they cannot do anything. But as a whole, uh, together, they can pull out the resources and form a CSR fund where they can take up all these initiatives and help the rural sector and help in building uh, rural India. Thank you. Imaj is, uh, you know, uh, you know, passionate insistence on making farmers strong and sustainable is. I really am impressed with this idea. Uh, BK, your thought? Well, uh, I would say since you asked for three things, one is reform in the subsidy process that government has. Second is focus on the precision agriculture FPOs, uh, CHCs. The total focus of government on that side. And third part is enhancing the testing capacity. Uh, as far as the government institutions are concerned. I think these are the three things which will revitalize, uh, revitalize this industry. I would also like to understand how the operating cost has increased, how much diesel contributes in terms of operating cost of uh, factor owner. Uh, uh, okay, so you need to uh, see, uh, Nabil, uh, uh, in a year, tractor is used for about 1,000 hours by a customer, right? And per hour consumption, is close to about three to three and a half liters of diesel, right? 
so which means in a year about uh, 3500 liters of diesel is being consumed now you can multiply by 80 rupees and you can multiply by 100 rupees so that's a 20 rupees gap which farmer is uh, you know spending extra as far as diesel is concerned then on the other side you need to look at what is the increase in msp and that is what is a net uh, difference you need to work out is impacting the farm but uh, the calculations that we have done for uh, this year our sense is that uh, farmer income will still be higher than the last year and uh, this data is also substantiated by the study which uh, we have seen from uh, bisil uh, 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 the farmer income with respect to last year is going to be about 3 to 4% up with respect to last year yeah so uh, look um, i have talked a lot a lot about this but i'll take just if you ask me what are the things that are going to the factors that are going to be the number one i would say is to structure uh, the government initiatives on incentives that are actually given out the government is actually doling out a lot of money i think if it's done in the right way i think it can actually improve the ability of the industry to cater to the farm needs right and sometimes they go the other way around so export incentives for example have gone down 75% uh, you know structurings in terms of interest rates if i look at equipment subsidies they're very ad hoc some states bring them out they bring them out for 25 units sometimes they'll bring it out for 500 units you know it it, it can't be uh, so ad hoc because that adds to unpredictability of farm income and the viability of the farmer so if you have structured programs and ease of access to incentives i think this can go a very long way in terms of in the industry actually trying to plan and being able to offer products at a much much more viable uh, uh, rate and 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 prices that could be palatable for the farmer the second of course is technology uh, uh, i think seema ji talked about it uh, vk talked about it look there could be the technology today the startup system is really good and i think um, a lot of these startups are actually helping farmers decide what crops to actually put so it's not you know legacy crops that if i grew rice or if i grow sugarcane right now this is what i'm going to do irrespective of where the sugarcane prices are going to be because you can very easily swap it for soybean right so you can actually go into what crops they are and that can determine what kind of farm income this the whole point about this is to the ability to improve farm income manage and and moderate the costs so that the actual income of the farmer and fa- uh, of rural india can actually go up and they are able to afford better equipment better solutions so that the the productivity can actually go up and that will further reduce costs for them and that's what is sustainable and this is what we, this is the way we got to do thank you so much ladies and gentlemen nabeen i would like to interrupt one more thing i i would like to mention uh can i uh, with I your permission what yeah like unlike uh, other uh, uh, auto sector like unlike two wheeler car industry and commercial vehicles tractor is actually totally different uh, industry so like in uh, two wheelers and all uh, retail happens on the same day but uh, in case of uh, tractors the uh, tractor is first taken away by the customer and he he tests it he tries it and the retail happens uh, in a period of around 30 to 35 days so i uh, i feel that the very first uh, uh, the first, very first step in the whole sales process is not right like when you put a wrong button or when the first button is wrong the other buttons themselves go wrong so the very first step in this tractor industry is not right and that practice is not rise right and that's why the whole uh, problem starts so i uh, it's my uh, appeal to all the oems and the manufacturers to come together and to think seriously about it and uh, make this um, sales process uh, like in two wheeler and um, it is through digitization that technology we can do it so it it can be done for furthermore the used tractor business is a very big um, business opportunity in tractor industry but uh, the registration process are not simplified the nocs and the transfer of registrations right now is hampering the um, registration of the used tractors 
so uh, it is again uh, the oems can take up this uh, issue proactively with the respective authorities and make this um, the, this uh, proposition as a profitable pro proposition and this can be an alternate source of income for the dealers as well and manufacturers as well so it's like uh, i i just cite an example of like uh, the style of working of google and facebook like what uh, they do they are they are providing they are earning the income uh, they are earning from the same customers pro to whom they are giving freebies like they are giving free gmail facility they are giving free uh, uh, google map facility or youtube facility or whatsapp facility and in turn they are earning from them uh, only so why can't we also be uh, work on the same lines and we give uh, facilities to the we look after the facilities giving facilities to the farmers and we earn from them on we make their lives also uh, good and uh, we make our lives also better thank you simadi of course the need for innovation is very important we talked about ease of doing business the process should be short and that's the absolute you know absolute requirement uh, and i'm sure rona can be able to take care of that uh, it was really certainly one of the most insightful discussions that i had on this uh, Uh, sector thank you so much everyone for joining et auto farm equipment amit uh before i end this discussion let me conclude some of the point that has been raised by the team panel members on the top of it what i see is a huge waiting list on testing of the product which takes about 3 to 4 years that is massive that needs to be worked out a uh, second the the land cultivable land that is not being fully utilized that needs to be done we need strong change in the terms of product innovation also uh, we need to boost you know custom hiring uh, these are some of the factors that could help revitalize what has happened what has come out of the pain is the price hike that we have experienced in factors that goes up to 13 to 14 percent as we came in and out 40 to 50,000 a unit talking about the tram uh, for implementation that is also uh, going to uh, shake the industry a bit so the impact is going to be only by on the 5 to 6 percent of the market but as the experts mentioned that there is going to be shift from the buyer side towards a smaller factor of 40 to 50 hp and that uh, is about 3 to 4 percent shift to smaller factor so that's it on the subject of revitalizing the tractor industry thank you so much everyone for joining et auto farm equipment summit is getting uh, coming up on another uh, very exciting presentation by next door thank you so much thank you everyone for getting deep into the discussion and for sharing electrifying takeaways Dear viewers, you can share these learnings with your peers on social media using the hashtag #ETAutoFEPS.